Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Change of Shift podcast. I am your host, Sean, with my awesome co-host, Emily. Good evening, Sean. Em, how was your day? Oh, it was lovely. Got a new do. Well, kind of a new do going. Cleaned up do. My do has uh, changed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you some of my hair. My do, has, my do has not changed in over a decade. So sometimes uh, I think that would be the better way to go. I guess to get taken care of mine. Yeah. Low drag. Low drag. Yep, exactly. So, my day was a little busy at work. Uh we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> we have a very, 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 very Yay! important guest with us this, this evening. We will introduce shortly. But as always, the beginning of our ep our episodes are a review and recap of previous episodes. Em, tell us about our last guest. Oh my gosh, last time we had Lisa Ford, who's a postpartum RN, and she is also a master's student um, who's working on a degree in informatics. She has <laughs> over 118,000 updates on Twitter, which still boggles my mind. Um, God, what a great podcast that was. It she was. was. Yeah, she was. It was It was a very uh, pleasant surprise. I was expecting, you know, maybe her, her to be kind of hesitant but in reserve, but she really opened up and uh, was about as genuine as you can get. Well, uh, and they, that, that's a carryover from her blog as well. I mean, mm -hmm. her writing, writing is very much, this is who I am, and these are my opinions, and she, you know, backs everything up with facts and yeah. And, you know, in, in talking to her, it's it. Sometimes you wonder when you're on the internet and you're cruising around different places. It's so refreshing to find somebody who truly re represents themselves, yeah, um, in, in what they write and what they tweet. And um, yeah, what a great, great conversation. One of the things that I was really interested in is her. Uh, one of the things that we ask all of our guests um, is what they're passionate about when it comes to nursing, and with with her position as a postpartum nurse and her recent, um, um, God, how old, how old are her kids? So, she, well, she has a, a child from previous marriages, which is, I think he's celebrating either he's 18 or maybe he's she's, even 21. She's got a, been a two-year-old, right? She's got a, she's got a 19 month old right now. Yeah, yeah. So her, one of her big passions is, um, and, and she asked us to pass on the hashtag normalized breastfeeding. Yes. Um, so it's it's always refreshing for me to see what other nurses are passionate about. And with hers, it's she talked a lot about um, making it OK to breastfeed in public, which, you know, you and I agree with wholeheartedly. So mm -hmm. great podcast. I'm glad we yeah, had her. Yeah. She was a, she was very refreshing. She I think she's going to do wonders for our profession. I so agree. She had a lot of wonderful advice to share. And she's very, very passionate about postpartum about her breastfeeding ventures and her informatics goals. So she was very passionate about that. And uh, she made no qualms about how she felt, which was <laughs> awesome. Probably, probably why we liked her as much yeah. as we liked her. That Absolutely. She, she was kind of a no BS kind of, kind of woman. So, yep. but. So yeah, if, um, if y'all missed it, check out the Change of Shift podcast. Yes. Um, what episode was that? Was seven actually. And we're on episode nine. Jeez. He's already, that's awesome. Because two episodes now I've done without my wonderful co-host. Um, oh, yeah. last, the, last, uh, the last show we did was a shotgun episode. Um, it was International Podcast Day this past week. Um, I don't know if it was a made-up holiday or not, but because <laughs> we have a podcast, I felt that we should at least get online and have a little bit of a talk and it was completely random and it was kind of a techie talk about all things podcasts. It really wasn't about nursing, but we had our good friends, Mike Sevilla and Drew Griffin, come on and talk a little bit about podcasting. We talked about how this video chat had a blab, which is what we do our podcast on. There was a 36 hour long blab that Ooh. had that had and every hour was a new podcast host with new topics. And I got sucked into the black hole <laughs> of collab back on Wednesday of this past week. And it was enlightening and exciting because some of the things that we as brand new baby podcasters are doing, they have already suggested. So I know we're on the right track. 
So we can thank our friends for that as well. Yeah. So <laughs> on to tonight's episode. Yay. So many of the current nurses out there in the internets and the current bloggers out there may not know who our guest is. We, of course, have a very, very dear and secure place in our hearts for our guest this evening. Kim Mc Ms. McAllister is a nurse blogger pioneer. And I call her the pioneer because she inspired and not only inspired, but revived a lot of nurses <laughs> to actually blog, to actually form a presence out in the internet. And for a very long time, she was the one of the very few voices that we had out there in the early years before Twitter, before Facebook, when all we had were blogs. And if I'm not mistaken, she was one of the first blogs that I stumbled upon when I started my blog. And I still remember the day that she actually responded to my blog. <laughs> I, I, I had, you didn't know all this, I had, did you, Kim? <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was, I almost passed out because Kim from Emerge a Blog commented on my blog. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Kim, Kim McAllister has been in the nursing profession for quite a while. I'm going to read a couple things that are right from her website. Kim has stepped away from the blogging world for a number of years. She has chosen to move on with no regrets because of personal decisions. We regret it, however. Mm, so amen. Let, me tell you, let me tell you a little bit about Kim before we let her take over the show here. Kim is the mother and creator of the original Change of Shift Blog Carnival. She started that back in 2006 on her personal blog called Emerge a Blog, which pretty easy to figure out. She has been in the world of emergency nursing for quite for most of her career. But if you go back on her blog and read a little bit about her bio, she has spent a lot of time in other places in our nursing world. The website, blog, and podcast, our podcast, borrowed the name from our mother here. We call her the original creator. She's one of the first nurse bloggers out there. She's responsible for sparking thousands of conversations, inspiring an even larger number of nurses to start or continue blogging, including myself and my co-host. Kim decided to step away from blogging in about August of 2013. And the last Change of Shift blog post was produced back in 2011. We've asked him to join us to talk about blogging journey as well as what she's been up to since she retired. <laughs> Kim, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Recovering from two night shifts. Woo! So still clocking in the hours, I see. The older I get, the harder it is to recover. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a couple things from your quote unquote outdated Emerge blog information. And you tell me how accurate it is to this day since it's been a couple of years now. Uh, it says you're still on an RN in the San Francisco Bay Area. Is that correct? Still is. Yep. Okay. You have you were blogging for most of your life because uh, you were blogging about the life and times of an ER nurse on your blog, Emerge blog. And it sounds like you did that for over six years. Is that correct? I want to say it was eight. About, yeah, about, about eight. 2005. So when you posted your bio, you had put in 33 years in yeah. our nursing profession. So how many years has it been now? It's 1978. So what's that? Yeah. Six? Uh, yeah. 10. So. 10. Wow. I'm, yeah. too, I'm too young to have been anything for 30 ah! years. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, you, you're still doing night shifts. You yeah. are definitely too yeah. young to have yeah. been doing it that My long. hero. <laughs> you have done most of your work in the ER. It looks like you've been in the ER for greater than 20 years at this point. And you have some experience in critical care, telemetry, psychiatry, and pediatrics. Right. And in May of 2010, you earned your BSN through the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And we talked prior to the show, you had an interest or you had been accepted into an MSM program, but life choices kind of turned you in a different direction. And we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. okay. Here, here's the part I want to read. And then you're going to take away the show here is that this was straight from, from a merger block, quote unquote, 
I made the decision to be a nurse on my ninth birthday after receiving Cherry Ames student nurse from my great grandmother. I was fortunate that it was Cherry. I could have received something like Itchy Smith, flea detective. My <laughs> life would have taken a totally different route. And that kind of encapsulates the kind of writing that you had on your blog. So how, what have you been doing? We miss you. About the time I stopped blogging, my first grandson was born. Okay. And that's part of the reason why I thought, you know, I want to focus on you and I don't want to go back to school because I'll be traveling to and from Portland frequently. And it was just basically at that point time to step away. So I thought I'm just going to focus on my job. I call myself semi-retired because I only work two 12 hour shifts a week. I gripe about it. Like I work full time. <laughs> you, you, you know what? With the amount of experience you have, you can gripe every hour oh. that you ever work. <laughs> I, I think you've you have earned those gripes. <laughs> you have earned it. Probably think I'm never home, and because I'm <laughs> before I go in and I go for a day after. <laughs> you were one of the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I'm just working, uh, going to NASCAR races and. Yes, it's one, one of the many hobbies that, that we have that, to discuss. Um, while my co-host and I would love to pick your brain nonstop about your blogging um, expertise, that isn't all about you. It's only some about you. So right. we are going to pick your brain a little bit about blogging, but we're going to talk about Kim post-blogger era. I do want to point out one thing for those of us who are not familiar with Kim is that in the early years of blogging, Kim was one of the first nurse bloggers out there, one of the first bloggers ever to actually earn money blogging. I don't know what that money was. I'm simply telling you that she is one of the reasons why I thought it was possible to actually earn money telling my story as a nurse. And years later, it did pay off. So I'm here to say thank you for that, is that she did it in the hardest way possible by putting out ads on her blog and uh, networking through other systems. Um, she was part of the Better Health Network way back when um, we didn't have blogging networks. We didn't have a whole lot of blogs out there. And Kim was the one and only nursing voice out there because uh, there were a lot more. I think there were a lot more physician blogs at the time. They might have been anonymous, but there were a lot of physician blogs out there at the time. And well, and, and and Kim, one of the things that Sean and I talked about a little bit, and I think we, we're pretty much on the same page most of the time anyway, but it's it's letting you know how much, and this we could go on and on and on and on because we talk about you fairly frequently, believe it or oh. not. Um, uh -oh. but, but when, when I found your blog as well, it, it was, oh my God, it's, it's not only possible, but maybe I should be sharing my voice. So it was wonderful to have a mentor, even though you didn't realize you were really mentoring us at the time, you really were mentoring us. And, you know, and we're just two of the, the thousands of people I'm sure who have read your blog over the years. So, so with that <laughs> preface, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Sean's asked you what, you know, kind of where you're at currently in, in your career. Um, what made you originally start blogging? Originally, it had nothing to do with nursing. I had been looking at a, um, listening to a talk show uh, host named Hugh Hewitt. And we're going way back. Yeah. And Hugh was huge into this thing called blogging. So I was looking at different blogs and they were all politics related blogs. And I thought if you were going to have, and I wanted to have one, but I don't know a darn thing about politics, still don't. Um, so I thought, well, I really can't blog on that. So I probably won't start. And somebody on Hugh Hewitt's show by the name of James Lilix run, has run a blog now since it was back on AOL days. And I started reading him. And he just talks about going to Target with his daughter and having <laughs> howling with laughter. And I thought, wait a minute, if he can write about going to Target and put it on a blog, what can I blog about? Duh. Uh, so I'm sitting at work back in the old days when 
no patients would come in for five hours at night. And I'm thinking, what could I blog about? Uh, what do I know well enough? I'm sitting in an ER. What do I know well enough? Bingo. Nurse. <laughs> And not to be a big expert on nursing, but my life, just the little things as a nurse. So I sat there and I thought of different names or tried to think of different names. And um, it kept coming back to emergency blog, you know, emergency blog. Mm -hmm. So um, I went over to the computer at work, never blog at work, people. Never <laughs> <laughs> it was back to the day when nobody knew what we were doing. <laughs> oh, this? I went over to a computer. I pulled up... Um, the old blogger site blogger was yeah. on that quick did kind of a stream of consciousness thing. I think my first one was about um, point. One of my first ones was about circadian rhythms and being a night nurse and you know, there you go well, at work. <laughs> and uh, the next day, maybe two days later, I'm learning how to look to see if you get hits. <laughs> this is great. And I had a little site tracker and I had 24 hits. Well, nobody. Twenty-four knew. people. Twenty-four. <laughs> nobody knew I was blogging. I didn't know that my family. What's a blog? Who knows? You know. So I'm like, oh my god, somebody found this. I'm going. I'm going viral. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back and I followed where it came from, <clears throat> and I had gotten sort of a late a link. Bora Zivkovic, if I'm saying Bora's name right, ran a, a blog on circadian rhythms. Circadiana, I think it was called, and he had hosted Grand Rounds that day uh, for that week. Oh, and he yeah. found, I thought he found it, but then I find out his wife, the nurse, found my blog and said, you look at this, you should read this. And he had put a link like the day after Grand Rounds. This was back when you did Grand Rounds and you got thousands of mm -hmm. hits that week. And um, so he found it. I thought, oh my God, there's somebody reading me. And yeah, I look back at the old, at the old ones, and it was just you know I didn't do a lot of paragraphs. It was just basically stream of consciousness. The run-on sentence. That's all it was. Exactly. Yeah. You know, just like you were sitting here talking. Yeah, and so um, for the viewers and listeners who are listening to this podcast right now, Grand Rounds was one of the very first blog carnivals out there uh, during the early, early, early years. Um, and Grand Rounds, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that all for? Was it all doctors or just? medicine a medicine it, or yeah. health care it could health care health care right there were there were uh um administrators people in all walks of life medical yeah. records uh anybody could contribute yeah that's where i got the idea for change of shift because i thought well wait a minute there's no nursing carnival there had been apparently and i don't I wasn't around for that. I think the one of the nurse bloggers that preceded me was Code Blog, Gina over at Code. Yeah, Gina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was already up and running, and um, so I was like, "Let's do a nursing one." So I tried to check and make sure I wasn't stepping on anybody else's toes because I didn't know if it existed, and it had sort of come and gone. So we did the first change of shift, and then we did it every. I think we did it every two weeks for five years yeah and then i remember i remember i used to used to try and blog faster or more often <laughs> so that i could put more submissions up for the change of shift so yeah. while we're on that subject where did the name come from it just hit it just kind of like emergency blog did i got yeah. we could call it nurse carnival or we could call it you know i don't know um um, registered nurses speak or, you know, and I just thought, no, I just thought change of shift sounded like, what do we do at change of shift? We sit around and we talk, we talk yeah. about patients, but we also shoot the bull and, and, you know, fill our, each other in on what's going oh, on. That was such a, <laughs> such a high five. Emily knows why I'm giving you a high five right now is that I'm going to find off he topic was completely. channeling you, Kim. Oh he was my channeling God. you. God, <laughs> Kim, you have no idea. I would love to give you a hug right now, <laughs> because when when Emily and I and uh, Mike and Drew were talking about this name, we had considered other names and changing it because the word nurse is not in the name. Right. So I went on this 
and I did. I went on a tirade. It was kind of it was kind of diary at the mouth for a while, but it was because the change of shift was so important that it not only conveyed important information, but it was also a way of decompressing. It was a way of learning about your coworker. It was a way of shooting the shit with your friends, you know? So it was an altogether place for nurses to um, not only be professionals, but be themselves. Yep, exactly. And, and, and that's why I love the name so much. And you saying that without me prompting you, <laughs> has made this whole interview worthwhile. I could sit back and not say a word the rest of the time. But he can't do that. <laughs> oh, I'm just sorry. I'm taking the moment in. I'm really taking the moment in. Because I, I came close to caving in and changing the name. And then I had, I, it was just like you said, I had a moment where I was like, wait a minute. This is why the change of shift is so important. And then I went on my tirade, but that's, I have no idea why I asked that question, but I'm so glad you answered it that, that way. Was it. That was it. So glad. And then I All spent right. hours trying to get a logo. That was the fun part. It's like, oh, let's play and get a logo. So mm -hmm. we had a couple of logos over the years, but I would play with these little logo makers and, you know, it was that, <laughs> the hours I spent just on fun stuff like that, you know. Well, that was back when HTML was still a hush hush thing and you yes. got to mess around with it and be able to put a tag inside of a photo or a link in a photo. That was exciting. I remember the first time I did that, I thought I was the cat's meow. Hey, click on that picture. It'll take you to a website. I did that. I did that. So, so, so I'm the tech geek side of this. What, um, did you code your first website? No. Or did you use? Not all. <laughs> Somebody named Shane Pike. Shane, I remember. Oh, I remember. Because I, I won that contest. Yep. Yep. He <laughs> comes, I get this email, you know, and it says, hi, I need information about nursing. And if you would be like a consult to answer my questions about websites, because he would buy websites and then build them up and then would sell them. If you would give me information on nursing, I'll give you a free website. And I Heck said, yeah, man. that's great. So both he and uh, for me and Terry Pollack, who was at Mother uh, Mother Jones, Terry's gonna kill me for not having that off the top of my head. I blame no, working last was, night. Was it, oh. She was Nurse Ratchet, wasn't she? Yes, exactly. Yeah, but I think it was Nurse Mother Ratchet. Jones' blog. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, so he would to both of us. And he says, we'll give you a new website. I said, fantastic. So whenever I had a problem or I needed to put an ad up or I had to do anything, because now we're on WordPress, not Blogger, mm -hmm. uh, there, there was Shane. And so for all these years, if I still see something on there that I want changed, even though he's not even doing that anymore, and it's still, I never paid for hosting. It's still hosted on the site back there. Wow. It was, wow. It was the best relationship talk about networking and yeah having yeah no kidding oh god no i know pretty much all of it to to him i remember in the old days on blogger i was hosting change of shift my first time and these were times when you would get 50, 60 submissions so you'd read them all you'd so wow. i was halfway done and blogger crashed <laughs> Oh, for this thing to go up, I believe it was Tuesday mornings, and it was a big thing on Tuesday morning to go to Grand Rounds because you knew your blog was going to get oh, thousands yeah. that day. I was up until four in the morning from scratch, redoing that entire thing again. So freaked out that I cannot blow this. I've got people all over the world waiting to do <laughs> this. That's what's called passion right there is that yeah, you never oh. got paid for that. You never, you never got anything out of that. You did that because of the love for the game. And yeah. I, 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 that's why you succeeded as much as you did is that you cared that much. Cause most people would have been like, I'll get to that the next time. Oh nope. no, you had a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. that you had this, this blogging cohort of all of all across the spectrum. It wasn't mm -hmm. just all across the spectrum. And 
it it was a big responsibility to have that on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. So how long how long did it take you to get to the point where you had that many people submitting? And and for for those of you who are listening, when you um, with the blog carnivals in the past, and now Sean is um, really spearheading the um, the reemergence of the change of shift blog carnival. Um, you would either you essentially email your information in your blog post to who's ever hosting. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then eventually people, the hosting would change from website to website. I remember I hosted a couple of times. Right. And um, so how long did it take you to build it up to the point where you're having that many submissions? In the beginning, if I did, at first I just put it out there and I also set it up on um, Oh, what was the name of that? Uh, there was a place you could go to set up blog. It was, it was called blogcarnival.com, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about I that. Oh, I found it. I remember that. So you could go there. You could send it to me directly in the email. Mm -hmm. um, and in the beginning, if I didn't have that many, I would go looking because I was reading a lot of blogs and they weren't submitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would go looking for the, the post and then I would put it in, in addition to the people that had submitted. And then it, at the peak of it i was getting enough we never got 50 or 60 we might get 15 which i think is a little more manageable yeah <laughs> but yeah so um yeah that's how we did it yeah so right now it's exactly what i'm doing is i'm basically going out and searching for them and creating them right now and just kind of collating them right now so that maybe people will start to get a little bit more interested in it and start submitting it themselves but yeah so it, i I can now appreciate the amount of work, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes into it. But it is, I am, I am bound and determined to to get it running again because it it did so much for so many, and I'm wanting to do that for others because you, like Emily has said, you have no idea what you did for an entire generation of nurses, and I'm ready and wanting and willing to do that for the next generation. It's so funny because that it, it when you're in the middle of it, you don't think that, you know, you just think this is fun. You know, I'm going to sit at Starbucks four and five hours. I would be at Starbucks because that would be the best place to go. And yep. I feel guilty. So every 90 minutes I'd buy another coffee. <laughs> oh, oh my God, I'm taking up this seat, you know. Um, but yeah, at the time you have no idea. And there's a, there was so much networking going on back then. Keith Carlson just wrote a book on networking. He's going to be excited if he's listening that I'm talking about networking. Yeah, <laughs> I believe they're in Vegas right now. I know. Yeah, they're I know. in Vegas right now. Yeah, some, some, some sort of business. I don't. I don't know the name of the the conference. I it escapes me right now. But Keith was yeah. one of the originals. Yep. You know? so, yeah. So and I think, oh my God, I need to blog like Keith. Mm -hmm. I, if I had just nobody writes like that, and you know, so we all had our own style on our blog. Yeah. So and I'm finding web I'm finding nurse blogs now on your change of shift that I didn't even know existed. No. You know, and that's the whole point. I'm doing both. I'm I'm trying to put seasoned blogs out there that people know. And then I'm picking someone that literally started a blog a month ago mm -hmm. and putting their stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, to to get an equal mix. And it's it's paying off already because people are starting to, to notice. I well, um, I'll, I'll tell you probably after the show a, a very interesting conversation I had on Twitter today with a user that knows us well. And I mean us as in the three of us knows us well. So I'll I'll tell you about that later. It was very well, enlightening. What you're, doing, what you're doing is there's a nurse blogger who's wondering, is anybody seeing my stuff? Mm -hmm. And they're going to wake up tomorrow with 24 hits <laughs> and think, oh, my God, this is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, and it's happening already because, and it's not happening on the, the change of shift right now, but it happened on Instagram the other day is that I follow any nurse that follows me on Instagram. I automatically follow them. I don't care what they're posting. If it's cat, NASCAR, nursing, I don't care. You're a nurse. I'll follow you. And right. I followed someone and I favorited a picture. And I don't even remember what the picture was. And he actually took a photo of me favoriting it. And then he posted it as a picture on his Instagram. Oh my God, Sean did favorited my picture. You know? And I went back and looked at it. And I was like, really? <laughs> so, 
I'm gonna have to find it and try and repost it. But you know, it was kind of it was kind of a it's kind of you know a, a life is a full circle at this point. You know, I, I guess you can consider me that status, but. I still have a hard time understanding that, but that's the way I felt with you and your blog and the way with Emily's blog is the, I'll never forget when Emily did the video change of shift and mentioned me on video. <laughs> that, I almost that was back. lost my shit. That was like, Oh my God. <laughs> that, that was, so. that was back before uh, the, uh, the corporate world, especially in the medical field started catching on to what was going on. And uh, back when I could get away with more stuff. Like that. <laughs> That's another reason kind of why I don't blog right yeah, now. Yeah. That was the heyday of the individual. Oh, God, voice. it was great. It was great. Yeah, and but, now everybody has a blog. Well, right? But a let's, let's, let's segue into that. So let's, let's talk about two things real quick. Let me guess I want, one of them. I, I want, yeah. Long term blogging? No, no, no. Oh. So, so, so you, what, Real quick, what was the most gratifying thing about blogging for you when you were doing it on the regular? What was the most gratifying thing for you? Meeting all the other bloggers and feeling connected like I was part of a, of a huge community that people I never would have even known existed except for blogging, them being a blogger, me reading their blogs, them reading my blogs actually getting together with bloggers from all over the world at that first blog world. Blog world. Oh, yeah. God, I remember that. Uh, I still remember how jealous I was of that. Oh yeah. Oh. Me too. Me too. Yeah. That was amazing because all of a sudden, and you realize that you know, these people, you haven't met them in real life yet, but when you meet, it's instantaneous. You know them because well, you're on their blogs. And we can appreciate that because, you know, Emily and I and Mike met, in person for the first time since we knew each other two years ago, it was planned. We met and it was as if, and we hadn't, I, and I can say this, we hadn't really directly spoken outside of via Twitter or Facebook for years. Mm -hmm. Yet During those first probably three years of that core time of blogging, I got to know them on a level that I still would have never been able to understand on Twitter or Facebook. Exactly. You know, so when we fit, finally met three or four years later, and it had been seven years since we started blogging, it was like I knew them, yeah. like we had grown up together. It was it was amazing. So that was that was the most gratifying. Um, and then I think the thing that I got out of it the most is when I started thirty seven years, I'm I was burnt. I've been up and down, in and out of burnout over the years. So I'm writing my blog and I'm kind of, you know, commiserating about this and that. And all of a sudden I'm seeing blogs by student nurses. And so I'm reading their blogs and they are so excited over becoming a nurse. They were so excited. They were sacrificing to get what I was totally taking, you know, mm -hmm. taking for granted for yeah. decades. And I thought, you know, I only had my only, I shouldn't say only, but I had my ADN for 30 years. And I thought, there's no reason for me to go back. Why would I go back? I'm perfectly fine. I have a great job, you know. Well, they got me excited into going back. And then I start, I thought, it's online. I don't even have to <laughs> go anywhere. And with 30 years behind you, that's the best time to do an online program. Yeah. So wound up going back to school directly because of, blogging and the nursing students who were blogging at the time that I was blogging. That's it's a awesome. direct, direct correlation. Now, before I forget to mention it, for those of you who don't know what blog world is, and I know that it's, its name has changed over the years, but it was the end all to be all for bloggers. It was bloggers from around the world would meet once a year and share ideas, share their, um, expertise on blogging and give lectures on either their topics or related topics or even just about blogging in general. And if I'm not mistaken, Kim was responsible for creating the health track at Blog World. That was interesting. It was, I had gone to Blog World or I was looking at all these blog uh, conferences that were going around and I'm like, and there were military bloggers and business bloggers. Mm -hmm. 
and all these niche blog areas. And I just ranted on the blog one day. I go, oh, my God, there's nothing for med bloggers, you know. Oh, Whoa. look out, world. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I know, I get an email or a comment from Rick Calvert from Blog World, which is now called New Media Expo because it covers podcasting, blogging, and all that. Mm -hmm. And he goes, we have room for you here. And then Rob Helper, from, who at the time was working for Johnson & Johnson, said, huh, Johnson & Johnson might be interested in sponsoring. So the very first one, there were only like six of us there. Shane went, myself, mm -hmm. Rob. Uh, there were a couple other bloggers. And they were like, OK, let's do it. So I think we did, I want to say, three years running. We had a med blog track. I'm pretty sure Dr. Mike Sevilla was, was in that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, Dr. Val was in that as well. Evan MD, yeah. Dr. Val. Oh, gosh. Wasn't yeah. um, Carrie? Was that she was in that as well, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. See, this, this is so bad. Cool. This is how well I remember all this. Yeah. That's well, how we jealous I was. The nurses and, and yeah. administrators and uh, and Bongi from. Uh, oh, yes. South yeah. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are reminiscing like I knew we would. So. <laughs> You stepped away from blogging for personal reasons, but I'm sensing that you also felt that the world of blogging was changing a bit. Yeah, it had gotten, I don't want to say corporate, but that, hey, here I am. I'm a, I'm a staff nurse just talking about, you know, life in the trenches. Um, it started to shift a little bit. So let's talk and, about that a little bit. Um, yeah. And I, I think... The online environment um, had tended to get a little more, I don't want to be negative about it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the friendly shoot the bull um, environment anymore. It had gotten more. I started watching, well, my writing style changed over the years. I didn't, when I first started, I wrote a lot, run on sentences, and you know, you get more concise as, you, as you're writing. So my writing style had changed. But I found myself getting cynical again. And I thought, you don't need to come here to read about being an ER nurse and have me start ranting about, you know, healthcare changes and, and ER and, and corporate uh, takeover of one's facility, uh, this kind of thing. And it was just, it was a real negative vibe. I could feel it, mm -hmm. uh, even writing... <clears throat> The last final post, I, I said it took me four hours to come up with this, you know, last paragraph where I didn't feel I needed an Ativan when I was done. Do, uh, do, Kim, do you think it was because of um, personal work burnout or was it the blogging atmosphere had changed or do you think it was both? I think it was a combo. It just, the two things hit at the same time. Because for the last couple of years, my posting had... Um, decreased. Normally I would do two or three a week and then I was maybe down to one every two weeks. So I think it just, maybe I felt like I had run my course and it wasn't interesting. Well, I can rant about anything. I'm <laughs> good at that. But I didn't want my blog to become a negative. Um, I'm just going to rant and rant and rant and rant. And I don't oh, you can any... say it, bitch. Bitch. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> you can say bitch. <laughs> A bitch is, no, 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 yeah, we, we, we're, we're all about the truth here, it being genuine. So yeah. we might be yeah. professionals, but yeah, we don't know whole part here. I didn't say, oh, uh, the blogging world has changed, and oh, now it's so corporate. Or no, it was just that was happening, and in the same time, I think I was just running out of steam. There have been at least six or seven times when I thought, uh, oh, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, Laura here. Nikki, Nikki R and Mama, she just oh. literally said, "Hey, look, it's the change of shift." So here we are, bitching and moaning. So kind of like, kind of like it's the change of shift. <laughs> so, kudos to her for that one. Sorry, had to point that out. So for those of you who are listening to the podcast, this is a comment from a Twitter user who's also a fellow blogger who also has been around the blogging world for a number of years, who has made yep. a very poignant, uh, uh, you know, observation. So, sorry, Kim, had to point that out. Oh, no, that's okay. So, what, what were we talking about? Bitching. 
<laughs> it was interesting. I my employers knew from the get go that I was blogging. Interesting. Uh, well, I did it right there. My coworkers knew, I, and then, then my manager knew. And the only time I ever ran into trouble was when um, I would do interviews for like advanced for nurses and things like that, and they would put where I worked. And then I found out if they were going to do that, I had to clear everything with the PR person at the hospital. So I just said, okay, I, I am now just, a, I work in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that's just what we'll say now. Because I thought mm -hmm. if full day in health, I'm going to pass anything past anybody else before I get the okay to, to do it. Right. But yeah, so my coworkers would read it. Um, it was never an issue. Then at first I was anonymous, not like Mike was, you know, Dr. Anonymous. I was, mm -hmm. kin, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but as uh, we got to know each other more and, you know, I thought, you know, you really need to own what you're writing. Oh, absolutely. And to put your name on there, because you can say anything behind a wall. And, and of course, back then, people weren't sure what. Oh, they're they, going to high five. Yeah. yeah. They weren't sure what this blogging thing was. And, you know, people got in trouble for blogging. I never did. I had support from the get-go at work, which was unusual. Unfortunately, my, my, my co-host probably has a bit, a bit of a different take on that because she has had some tough times. Yeah. And, and for me, partly because my, my role is so visible at work. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. it's, I mean, we have rules as to if you make the news, you know, you need to be, if somebody catches you making the news because of responding to something, it's, uh, um, <laughs> you get teased. Um, but just the fact that, you know, we're in such a visible role a lot of times, um, that big blue helicopter comes in and, you know, there's all, all sorts of pictures and video, et cetera. Um, so it really took a lot of wind out of my sails as far as writing, because it's, you know, how much do you write? How much do you not write? And, you know, HIPAA became, I think HIPAA was becoming bigger and bigger during that time frame as well for all of us. Right. Uh, I remember, remember having to uh, go to the, what, what was the name of the website where you got the badge that said it was oh, you were HIPAA yeah. compliant? What was I can't it? remember the name of it. Med, Med Bloggers Code of Honor. Or Med Code, yeah. I remember how proud I was when I got that approved and slapped that on my blog. Yeah. But yeah. It, Kim, you, you, you brought up a wonderful point because when Emily and Mike and I met in person, we all kind of shared the same griping and the same stress that there's a certain point where it becomes a little too much. The bitching becomes a little too much. Mm -hmm. And Mike, Mike coined the phrase that people started screaming too much, that it was, yeah. it wasn't about sharing information anymore. It was about yelling at each other. Yes. And, um, and I know that Mike stepped away for a short, for a short time. I don't, I met him in three months, six months. I don't know. Emily stepped away for a couple of years. Yep. I, I hid in, you know, the blogging world where I got paid to blog. And then my personal blog kind of went dormant for phew, almost a year. Mm -hmm. You know, only reason why I blogged is because I was required to. So I think we all had, if you do this long enough, you're going to need to take a break in some way, shape or form. Because you start to repeat yourself and then that negativity starts to, I don't want to say eat away, but it starts to be the, the majority of the voices that you hear in your head. Well, and, and I think bloggers, too, use writing as a therapy. You yeah. know, it, you, you're a writer first, then you're a blogger. And, it, you know, in, in they talk about using journaling as <laughs> therapeutic yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, mechanism in so many different ways. So it's, it's easy, I think, to fall into that trap. Um, and for me, it's having people like you guys around that continues to make me more excited to continue being a nurse. So yeah. I, I think it's surrounding, surrounding ourselves with the right people. And, and then, you know, figuring out how to keep encouraging. I mean, you know, we had Pammy on here, I think our very, very first show, she's a nurse who has her LPN, who is seriously considering just saying to heck with it, with getting her RN. And she's all fired up and writing again. Um, and she's pushing it on for school. So, you know, I think there are a lot of really good things that come from what we're doing. Yeah. Um, it's, 
you know, and Kim, have you thought about going back to writing at all? Yeah, every now and then. And I, I always laugh. I say, if I sit here long enough, it'll pass. <laughs> Do you write anywhere? Do you write for anyone right now? No, no. And part of the, the burnout with blogging had come when I was actually writing for two other sites. Um, and one of them was like twice a week. And the other one was like <clears throat> twice a month. Wow. And and these were these were paid gigs where mm -hmm. I just couldn't say my feeling mm -hmm. of I feel your pain. I had to research it and I had to have, you know, I was writing basically a, a paper, yep. a little tiny paper yeah. twice a week. And when I'm doing that, or emergency blog just kind of, you know, went went dormant for a little while while I was doing that. But after a while, it was like my eyes were crossing. There's yeah. just so much you can do. That's kinda... And in the old days, you would say, here's what I think. You know, I'm just going to put that out there. And it's like you're sharing. And these days, it just seems like the minute you get into it, never happened on Emergy Blog, actually. I, I did a couple of um, controversial topics, but it always stayed pretty... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It stayed G pretty G-rated <laughs> yeah, and respectful. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the yeah. people on my on who commented on the Mergy blog, it always stayed respectful. Mm -hmm. Nowadays you put it feels like you put, here's how I feel about mm -hmm. it. And then and the trolls and the haters show up. Boom, boom. And that's what had happened, you know, at the end of Change of Shift about why it finally went down. I think I had a come to Jesus meeting when I think it was Keith Carlson had um, hosted one week and he says, Kim, I got nothing but list posts, you know, 10 ways you can be mm -hmm. this from a website that's selling nursing. Because that's nursing. what sells clicks. Yeah. So the, the personal, Hey, um, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I had a patient, <laughs> that you would put together from five or six patients and um, that had gone away. Yep. And it was just, and I see, he goes, should I put them all up or should I, you know, and I was like, Oh, well, and I would get, I'd get 20 of those for blog carnival and not so many, you know, nice written. Do you, do you think it's the shift away from it, it, Sean, Mike and I talk at length about, um, losing the long form blog post and, and oh. how long form blogging has really done this nosedive. Um, do you think it was the rise of more of the micro, the micro posts and Twitter and do you think that, that, had, a, yeah, do you think that had an effect on it? I didn't think that at first and Kevin Poe and I were on a, on a uh, panel at blog world and he goes, no, the future you know, being online is going to be Facebook. And Twitter, and I'm like, oh no, I'm blogging forever. <laughs> you know, boy, was he right? Because now <laughs> you could even put up a post, and people are going to comment over on your Facebook link, yep. not on your blog itself. Correct. Or they'll have the conversation on Twitter and not on the blog itself. Yeah, it's unfortunate so, that it's you know the convenience era at this point. People don't want to spend the time to post the long form blog anymore, and. Uh, there's a certain sense of gratitude and I, I don't know, you get to know the writer a little bit better right. when they have to take the time to write something that's longer than two paragraphs, Right. you know, and it's, it's definitely lost. And I am trying to share posts out there that are not the lists, you know, right. there's a wonderful blogger who is anonymous right now and she goes by the moniker Florence is dead. Oh, I just discovered her because of you. Love her. Love <laughs> her. If you get a chance, read a handful of her posts. And she says, she reminds me of, um, you mentioned the, the anonymous blogger earlier. She's an ER nurse, Kay. Yes. She yes. reminds me of Kay. And yep. I mean, I, I only have read, I never really read as much as I should have with Kay, but she reminds me of Kay because she gives the straightforward answer about what nurses are really thinking about patients sometimes. Like for yep. instance, the Diet Coke incident, if you read that one, that was a polarized post. That was viral. That it talked to. about it talked about her taking care of the patient and then either <gasps> the patient or the family member said, 
by the way, can you get me a Diet Coke? And that's when she had this real estate. Am I, am I a nurse or am I, am I the hostess? Yeah. And she yeah. lost her shit. And it was beautifully written. So yep. I did read that one. Yeah. I did. So I am big. I want to interview her, but being that she has admitted that she's anonymous and we yeah. don't know if she really is a she, she claims she's a she, but she doesn't want to be on video. So I'm still trying to figure out how we can do a podcast with her that it's just right. audio. We're still in the early stages of this podcast, but I will get her on this podcast one way or another. <laughs> so there's a, there's a handful out there that, that are that are not ready to be on video yet. So we're gonna we're gonna get them on audio somehow. So she's and one of them. There used to be a, a big variety in the styles, which is what was fun. You know, mm -hmm. Nurse K was my guilty pleasure. Yeah, I'd yeah. go over there and he'd be she'd just lay it down. Yeah, I mean, this is would. crazy central, and that's when I told her one day I work in Cushy Central. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she would, she's the first. I remember the first one that typed out the word dude d o o d. Yes, like you know. <laughs> nurse dude and then doctor so and so and she would name them by like what they didn't do kind of right. you know moniker so she was she was very uh imaginative but if yeah. you were a nurse you knew exactly what she was talking about <laughs> you, you didn't have to sit there and think about it you were like oh yeah that happened to me too that kind of thing and that's so. the, the fun thing was she could be outrageous she was yeah. anonymous mm -hmm. but she wasn't you know right. she had a she had a persona, just not the name behind it. So, and it's, that, used to, that used to be a lot of fun to go over there and watch. Yeah, so there, so that that argues the the idea that there's some security in in being an anonymous blogger. You yeah. Know, but oh, the know, fear, the fear and anxiety that would go being for me covered. would be yeah. woof. Well, I was well, anonymous. You guys don't remember that because you know, but I was anonymous. Oh, for I, quite remember. A while. I remember. I yeah. remember. <laughs> The, the picture, the six pack ab. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Tim, you remember that picture? Jeez, I, remember I, I, I still picture remember this day. Head. I remember this the day vividly that I think Dr. Val, I think um, you, Kim, and it should it, it must have been um, Terry. You guys must have been somewhere. Maybe it was Blog World. I don't know where you were. But you guys were somewhere, and Dr. Val actually asked out on Twitter, is that really you? So <laughs> I remember that specifically coming from Dr. Val. And years later, Dr. Val and I are still good friends out on Facebook. I, I talk to her quite a bit on Facebook every once in a while. And she's really into fitness now. Like, she's she's ran yeah. 5Ks. She's yeah. on a, she has a personal trainer. When she travels, she has equipment she brings with her. So it's it's kind of a full circle kind of deal. So it's 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 entertaining. So it's amazing that some of the short the little things you remember over the years. Right, right. So Kim, somebody in the in the chat room asked, "What is your most compelling nursing story? Do you have something that comes to mind?" Yeah, um, <laughs> one that I can necessarily. It was the loss of a very young patient, and. Um, it still affects me to this day. I know her name, her age, her birthday. I remember it's like it's seared in my brain. So, um, and I kind of did a composite on her in one of my posts over the over the years. Uh, the nice thing about being a nurse for 30 years is that you can composite yep. everything. You know, you can take the 95-year-old, hook it up with the 20-year-old and make a story out of it. And it's totally true, but you'll never know who it was. Right. Um, so my most compelling nursing story other than that one. Um, oh, gosh. I'm like ER. It's all running through my mind. What's my <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here trying to remember the definition of compelling. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, let's really look it up. Yeah, like I got to Google the word compelling. What do you mean? Exciting, um, scary, tragic, memorable. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll so. tell you how I got into ER. I was, I started critical care, uh, coronary care, intensive care. That's how I started for the first 10 years. And the census was low. So they sent us, they go, would you like to cross train in this little, I worked in this little tiny ER, three rooms and two hallway beds. That was it you want to go cross train then if you're there ever busy you can at least help them you don't have to take a day off blah, blah, blah. I'm like I don't want to go to ER no 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 I was there probably four hours and thought oh my god this is what I want to do with the rest <laughs> of my life 
I didn't know there was this type of nursing. You know, I mean, I know there were knee ER nurses, but patients come, then they go. They come and they go home and no two days are the same. I don't have to take care of a patient on the vent for like two weeks straight. <gasps> yeah, that, that was like two months straight sometimes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You know, I loved it. So ever since then, and then I laugh that my career has been 10 year blocks. I worked 10 years somewhere, then I do something different. That's where psych came into the picture. I did 10 years, did psych for two and a half. Did Bless 10 your heart. Bless did, your heart. Well, it sounds impressive, but it was no, crazy. no, it is, it is because I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Like, I'm there's there's, there's areas of nursing that I know a hundred percent in my bones I couldn't do because I'd fail miserably. Post and that's well, one part of <laughs> yeah. So that'd be one area I would no, fail I, miserably. I could not do L and D. No, no, <laughs> I'm right there with you. I tried. I, I didn't see my first vaginal birth until three or four years ago. And I, but, yeah, I, well, I will admit the first time I saw that, I was like, <laughs> oh, I didn't even I see one in nursing work. school. Oh, I did. I did. I was 18 and passed out. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. I, all of a sudden I'm like, you know, we were on call. So I had my uniform ready, white shoes, white uniform, the whole thing. And I, they call and I go running to the hospital because, oh my God, you're going to have this baby without me. So I hadn't had breakfast or anything. And it was no, a four step birth so it was a little bit on the intense side and all of a sudden i'm like i don't feel very good and the doctor turned around and said get her out of here <laughs> probably turned down. white and you were gone yeah, exactly you were so going like, oh so i my 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 uh instructor was so cool she's like mm -hmm. did you eat this morning mm -hmm. no but i'm 18 years old good god i this is before the internet there were no videos I watched. This is the first time I'd ever even seen a birth mm -hmm. or even thought about seeing a birth. And whoop, down I went. <laughs> All right. So let's 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 finish some the, the topics here. So one quick piece of advice you would have for for a new blogger. Any nurse blogger just starting, what piece of what's the one piece of advice you would give? I thought I hang on, I wrote that down. Oh, oh, okay. oh there I am. Did I lose you there nope, for a minute? Right. Oh, good. Okay. I forgot the camera's still on. Mm -hmm. I would say, gosh, I have advice for old bloggers. That's okay. Oh, good. We'll, we'll take we'll it. We'll get there. We'll, we'll take, take that. It. it can answer the old. Okay, then. So give us a piece of advice for an old blogger like myself and Emily, and then we'll, we'll And we're going to be like this blogger. on the screen. Yeah. No, because I think, we already, I, I think we already talked about it. When the passion is going away, it's time to take a break or step away. Mm -hmm. When it's no longer fun, that's it. It was no longer fun. It became just another thing that I felt like I had to do. And that was hanging over my head. Sounds horrible. I don't have, in retrospect, I don't have that feeling about it. But at the time, it right. was just something that needed to go. So don't be afraid to take a break or move on if that's what you want to do like i know gina leaves her blog up even though she doesn't post that much mm -hmm. and i probably could have done that but it still felt like it was hanging over my head new bloggers don't look over your shoulder while you're posting write from your heart and your experiences and how you feel about your experiences no one can argue with how you feel they can argue with with your opinion, they can argue with a fact that you might state, but nobody can argue with what you feel. And that's what blogging was. Here's my experience in this area of my life as a physician, an administrator, yeah, a nurse. Yeah, no kidding. Well, Internet that's hug. <laughs> I love it. And that that was the gist of blogging back in the day. It wasn't you're so right, much. You're like, right. Everybody you know. starts to 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 do defensive blogging. Yeah. You're afraid to offend somebody. You're afraid to say the wrong word or say or uh, you know involve something that you shouldn't have. And if you stick to your own personal experiences and your own feelings, and you, st I, I, that's just perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That you know people can't discount you for how you feel. Yeah, right. you know they can sit there and argue to their blue in the face, and the haters and the trolls can sit there and 
you know, blast you all they want if you have an opinion or if you pick a side or you yeah. state you, you share a piece of news. But if you stick to how you feel and your personal experiences, you'll never go wrong. And that's awesome. Yeah. But you know what? Two things that have just made this whole episode work. <laughs> Two things right there. So we didn't get to talk about it much, but I find it fun and I find it interesting that you still are a huge NASCAR fan. Oh, yeah. And, Going on eight years now. And is it Casey? Yes, Casey King. Yeah, see, I, I didn't remember his last name. I remembered it's the K, Casey with a K. <laughs> I am I am unfortunately not a NASCAR fan. I'm sorry. I'm not. I tried. I really tried. And, and, and the one and only NASCAR that I watched, Dale Earnhardt died. Oh my God! Are you serious? That's the so only I don't watch, race you've seen. Only race I watched. First and only one I watched because I watched it with my then girlfriend because she was a huge NASCAR fan, huge Dale Earnhardt fan. Oh, back then, and that's when oh, you know. No. That's when the sun first got into it, you know, and that's when he. That's when the whole safety bar and all that stuff came out. But I remember sitting in her mother and father's house. And you could hear a pin drop. And these oh. are these are old country boys and country girls that hoop and holler, right? And yeah. yeah, then we find out that he died and that that was the first NASCAR race I watched from start to finish. Oh. Haven't watched one since then. <laughs> That's a traumatic one to watch. Yes. No yes. kidding. So, yeah. So you're also a cat lover. So my oh. wife, my wife is a cat lover. I love the woman who loves the cats. So, oh, oh. there's never not three or four cats hanging around me at any. Pretty. Point. Look at those yeah. eyes. Oh, she's a cutie. She's yeah. a feral, or she was a feral. She's not feral anymore. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, Emily, did you did you Emily, did you tell Kim what your cat's name is? <laughs> oh, Kim, you will you'll especially appreciate this. I have a ginger male who adopted me. He was feral as well. Um, he got named Bougie. <laughs> bougie? His name's Bougie. The bougie, the bougie catheter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His name's Bougie. Yeah. So she <laughs> scarred me because now every time I use the bougie when I pull out the bougie. Yeah. I think of Emily. I think of Emily and the cat, which is crazy. Like naming your cat Foley or Swan Dance. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's I'll a name oh, your Swan. cat Foley. That's great. I love it. Well, you know, flight nurse has got to have her bougie. So. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. Last time I used the bougie, right before I'm getting ready, to, I was doing a tube exchange. I remember thinking to myself, "This is the name of a cat." <laughs> It was ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. And I lost focus because I was like talking about an airway here, not a cat. So I was like, focus. So yes, so yes, thank you very much. Don't let your mind wander. Yeah, yeah. And lastly, what well, I still to this day, anytime I see stuff on the internet, I post it on your page, is Doctor Who. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's about my family just can't believe I'm into all this stuff. So that's about a four year, four or five now. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we're going to have to get offline and you're going to have to. Yeah. I have tried to watch it and I just can't. I, mm -hmm. uh, I never know where to start. No, uh, you should start with the first year of Matt Smith. Okay. Who's that? Who's that's that? That's the one to start. Okay. Who's He's Matt Smith? The 11th Doctor. Okay. We're going to have to remember he's like, that. He's a medical doctor, by the way. This is just the title he's given himself. Gotcha. So he doesn't have a name. So the whole point is, it, he goes, I'm the doctor. And someone will go, well, doctor who? And that's oh, what he's Interesting. See, you learned something interesting. There you go. Uh, I, I, too, have tried. And, you know, I have, I can access it either online. I think I can get it through Netflix, too, if I really yep. wanted to. Yep. And Yeah. So I haven't had the chance to watch it yet, and I love all things sci-fi. Yeah. So you'd be, you'd be. Sh my wife is shocked that I don't watch it. Yeah. I watch and every other. I started. I started with Matt Smith. That's why mm -hmm. I'm saying if you start there, that's a good a good starting that's point. A good starting point. I won't have you so, start with the, the latest guy who I love. Who, what year are we on now? So you're saying that's eleven season eleven? No, oh, no, no. Oh, right. Fifty years. So, yeah. So it's how far film. back is how far back is Matt Simon? Oh, Matt Smith is Smith, just sorry. about 
four or five years ago. Okay. The doctor regenerates. So now we're, so the actor can change. Mind the, blown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grief. All right, Sean, so we got to, homework we, now. We got, we got, we got our homework. We got to finish the, we got to finish the podcast. Like we always finish the podcast. We have five off topic, completely random, but not really random questions that are rapid fire questions. You get five seconds to answer. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. And, and he sings, he sings a countdown song too. So, okay. so you get five seconds. All right. So here we go. First question. What's your favorite color? Red. What's your favorite movie? AI. Oh, Artificial intelligence. Oh, nice. What's your favorite food? Avocado. Ah, California girl. Okay, all right. I'll take that. <laughs> Clogs or traditional shoes? Oh, traditional. Thank you. Finally, someone <laughs> said traditional. <laughs> Everyone else has said clogs. I look like a duck when I wear clogs. Uh, <laughs> good grief. And one final question. What is your most favorite piece of nursing equipment? Caps. Ah! Ah, yes! <laughs> and that's one thing I was going to remember oh, to ask really you about is wearing a cap. That's hilarious. <laughs> yep, yeah, I still have mine. I was going to ask if you did. Tomorrow. I would wear it tomorrow. Oh, we still have a nurse at our institute. I think she may have just retired. She still wears her cap. We yeah. had one. The 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 hospital I worked at prior to my first NP job, she still wore all white with the white the white Ted hose, the white shoes, the oh. white skirt, the white top, and the white hat. She wore it every day. But well, we did that as an experiment in one of the hospitals I worked at, just because it was Nurses Week. So oh, we cool. long enough to have caps and we bought one for our coworker who was new and didn't have one. So we all wore our caps that night. The different with just our scrubs. Well, actually I wore oh, white. I'll, I I'll wore bet white. people like stood up straight. The difference <laughs> in respect was unbelievable. Instead of I need a blanket. How long are we waiting? Blah, blah, blah. They would come up to the desk and go, excuse me, nurse. How much longer do you think that we'll be waiting for my father and me? Really? Oh, yeah. Really? Even after Nurses Week, I just kept wearing it with my scrubs because wow. it was an unbelievable difference in the. I'd be. I think oh. I might have to run an experiment. <laughs> now I'm fascinated. Yeah. See, it would. I don't Not think it would that. work very well for me because if I put on a cap. It probably would not have the same effect. It would probably you know, have, have, it would probably have the on. opposite effect. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so when I graduated nursing school in my all white uniform, I didn't wear a cap. Everyone else did. Yep. Of course, male, female. So, yeah, I look like a Q tip. So, <laughs> horrible. No, so. I'd wear it. I, it's interesting that when I did that experiment, it was. 15 years ago, it was a long time ago. I wonder if it would change. Of course, I would get razzed to high heaven if I put this cap on, um, like nobody's business. But it'd be interesting to see if there was a difference or if the young people even know what it means or what no. it's what it stood for. They won't even know. Be a lot a lot of the current generation, maybe, maybe not the current, but maybe the little bit a little bit younger generation, they relate to uh nurse ratchet. Yeah. See the cap. They don't they still don't understand the significance behind it, but you know, they see the cap and they automatically think the movie Nurse Ratchet. So Right. Right. Exactly. So, Kim, it has been an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you. Thank you fun. so thank you. very much for and taking the time out of your day to come and talk with us. Waking up to come and talk to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was uh this was kind of a um this was a must before we really catapult ourselves with this uh, venture that Emily and I have um so crazily undertaken. Cuz now so. it's kind of fun cuz now I'm the blog reader. Yes. Yeah. And I can say, okay, what's our change? Because when I got the link for Change of Shift, I'm like, oh, let's go look at some of these blogs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's completely random, right? The, the carnival is completely random. And right now, the interview, the guests that we're interviewing really are just people that I reach out to on Twitter and people that Emily is reaching out to in her own professional experiences right now. I have a couple other 
interest, but we got to get our we got to get everything mobilized first. So I mean, we still don't have a lot of things taken care of, but like a logo, Kim. We need yeah, a logo. We, yeah. So <laughs> I have it. I have it in the works. I really do. It's. I just, have to tell you though, something what I think is grand rounds this time. What what functions as grand rounds these days is Kevin MD. Yeah, yeah. And I'd yeah. like to see a lot more nursing blogs and nursing stories on Kevin MD. Yeah. Yeah, they do a lot of guest posts, but you, you and you sub, you obviously submit them there. So, you know, it's you don't just get yeah, picked, you have to submit it and it has to be approved. So you gotta have Kevin's people approve you. That's so, okay. Which is okay. I've met Kevin. I have I have an inside trap. No. <laughs> Hint, hint, hint. We know somebody. We, we would, we, well, you know, we haven't tapped that resource <laughs> yet. So we're getting there. Going, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> we'll get there. So for those of you who have been listening to our podcast, either on a download or have found us on the internet, on YouTube, thank you as always for visiting and joining in on the conversation. We have interviewed nurse blogger pioneer Kim McAllister. She is a retired blogger of sorts now. Um, she helped create the name, the moniker, the infamous calling of the change of shift. We have kind of rebranded it. It is now the change of shift podcast. We have the change of shift website um, and we have many, many, many social media sites that also take on the same name, the change of shift. Kim was the very first person to create the name. And I can thankfully say that I have the same feelings as Kim does in regards to why the name is so important and why the concept is so important. Almost word for word. Sean. Oh man. <laughs> word word. I'm I'm gonna go back once the show is done recording, Kim, and I'm going to go and find it. I'm gonna I'm going to paste it in here so that you can <laughs> see what I said. That it literally is exactly what you said, which is crazy and i we have never met until tonight in person face to face like this so this was not this was not pre-recorded this was there's no cheating here so just to finish the episode up i've posted our website thechangeofshift.com you can find us out on facebook just the change of shift we have a facebook page fan page there we're also on twitter at the handle ask the cost that is a s k t h e C O S short for change of shift ask the cost. And of course we're on Google plus as well as YouTube for the change of shift. M, do you have any final thoughts? Kim, thank you so much for allowing us to continue the journey that you started. We are, oh, my, this is exciting. I'm so grateful. Thank you for letting us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. This has been, yeah. a, this has been great. So yeah. Sean, what do we always say? Always, always, always remember, check, check your, your own pulse first. first. <laughs>